Well, hello again, and welcome again to another episode of Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. And I'm your host, Urush, and you're listening to the Internet Radio. And we have been going through the uh, teachings on the tabernacle and the importance of really understanding the tabernacle and how it was built and why it was built the way it was built and everything that went into it. It was all given uh, by God himself to Moses. So continuing on with our study, today we're going to be looking at the outer court. Well, uh, to start out with, I would suggest that you read uh, Exodus 25, verses 1 through 9, and Exodus 27, verses 9 through 15, to get some background. Also read Hebrews 9. Now, the outer court, looking at the size, it was 150 feet by 75 feet by 7 and a half feet. You know, the cost had been estimated at about a million five hundred before inflation. <laughs> well, in today's world, with uh, the president that we have now, and I'm not going to go into politics, uh, our inflation rate is a lot higher. So I don't know, maybe this is probably worth about two, three million right now. Well, the white linen fence. The white linen represents Jesus Christ in all his purity and absolutely righteousness. And I could describe his holiness, but no words can really express it. He is the holy of holies. Now, he did no sin. He knew no sin. In him was no sin. The symbols expend, uh, extend beyond this, however. The linen was made from flax, and flax is grown from the ground. And the picture of his sinless humanity and his earthly ministry. And I could describe his ministry. All you have to do is read all the Gospels. He, he was the mediator between God and man. God made flesh, etc. See John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was, was God. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, the white linen uh, fence kept defiled man away from God's place of worship. The first act of worship was through the court gate to the place of sacrifice and a brazen altar. This is man's only approach to God. Man must approach God through Christ. He is the only way. No man comes to the Father except by the Son. Now the pillars. The pillars capped with silver held the linen sheets in its place. It represents believers holding up the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ for the world to see. Neither a man spoke like this man. See John 7, 46. These wo uh, wounds uh, at the gracious words, they wondered at the gracious words which proceeded from his mouth. Luke 4:22. Well, we have a lot of responsibilities. What are you going to do with the Christ? Well, the silver here speaks of redemption. Note that the material for the tabernacle was given as a free will offering, except the silver. The same amount of silver was required from each Israelite for the tabernacle. A half shekel was determined as an atonement money for every male uh, starting at the age of 20. The, uh, this produced four tons of silver. The cost of all men's salvation was the same. The precious blood of Christ 
and this applies this truth in the present time. Now the pillars were made of brass, and brass speaks of judgment, illustrating the serpent of brass. It is a picture of Christ bearing our judgments on the tree. This pillar of brass was seated on the plate of brass, speaks of the judgment that is passed. To sum up, we have a picture of the believer who has been crowned with redemption. Although condemned to die, judgment is passed. In addition to these things, the believer is holding up to the dying world, the purity of Christ and the righteousness of God. We come to the gate. The gate was beautiful as well as spectacular, uh, spacious. The color were in contrast to the white. This was the way to the uh, brazen altar and to God. The gate was 30 feet wide. It was the only way in. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way the, and, and I am the door. There is one mediator. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, said the Christ. No other name under heaven. The wide gate is a picture of the easy and simple way of salvation is offered to all. The gate was covered with fine linen but with the difference, the color of blue, purple, scarlet, and the white was woven into it. Why these particular colors? They were chosen by God to give a meaning. Note the typical teaching. If the white linen speaks of Christ's righteousness, surely the other colors speak of him too and I'll explain how the Gospels portray the Lord. And we see him in a different portrait in each Gospel. And we've covered this before. In Matthew, it's the king. Uh, in Luke, it's the servant. In Mark, it's the man. And in John, it's God. Now, the blue represents Christ as a heavenly one. John, in his gospel, said Christ is the Son of God. The purple is the color of royalty. Matthew portrays him as king. The scarlet is the color of blood, reminding us of the sacrifice. Uh, Mark, in his gospel, pictures Christ as the perfect servant, obedient unto death. The white represents purity and righteousness. Luke presents him as the Son of Man, the Holy One, the Sinless One. The colors then represent the Lord in this fourfold sense. Now, not another interesting thing. Uh, Note another interesting thing. There were no cherubims woven into the curtain. In the curtain at the tabernacle door, and also in the inner veil, they were, uh, in the inner veil, they were woven. The cherubim speaks of the guardians of the holiness, and the garden guards their way into the presence of God. No guard was placed at the gate. The, uh, the way of the brazen altar was open to whoever will. No barrier except between the sinner and the Lamb of salvation. There's nothing to stop us from coming to him. The four pillars of the gates. The four pillars which support the gate's curtain speaks to us of the four writers of the gospel. The pillars of the other court represents believers in Christ. The picture here then is of the apostles and the believers holding up Jesus Christ in all his purity. Think of what this means. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John hold him up through the gospel. We as believers hold him up in our lives. The hangings of the court gate was the last thing in the tabernacle to be erected. When this loyal, uh, lovely gate was erected, Moses could say, it is finished. 
the way of access to God was proclaimed a finished work. How beautiful this speaks of the finished work of Christ when he said, it is finished. The veil and the temple was split from top to bottom. The way of God was now open. He could come out to man and man could go in to him. The end.